Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is the ultimate Unity tutorial for beginners and welcome to episode 29. In this tutorial we are going to focus on completing this entire quest that we've been working on for the past couple of tutorials as well as creating a kind of gate to the outside world because we've got a lot more to get on with as soon as we finish up this whole skeleton quest. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well. Stay up to date with every tutorial that I upload to my channel and indeed everything else on game development that I have. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, this final stage of getting this whole skeleton thing to work relies upon us going back a little bit to our NPC right here. Now, the NPC uh, himself actually has a collider around him. And I believe this conversation is the trigger. Now, what we need to do is we need to head back into that script, the NPC chat. We need to create another possibility here of, for example, when we have completed the um, actual skeleton slaying, he says something else yet again. So the idea of what he's going to say is once we've got the skeleton, he's going to give us the key to a gate to get out of this little village. So all we need to say is we need to basically refer to everything else in here as something separate. So, for example, when we kill the skeleton, where basically we say that's gone, don't need to do that anymore. We need to say the next thing along. Now, to do that, we need to have that bool as uh, something specific because at the moment if we go back here we have dialogue state dot state take acts equals true so everything we're doing at the moment is done via this dialogue state script now what we'll need to do is basically create an internal version of that but for the skeleton being slayed so public bool skeleton slayed by default we'll make that equal to false semicolon what we also have to do now to the current existing if statements is add an and to there so we need to say if dialogue state dot take act equals false and skeleton slayed equals false equals false and the exact same little bit of code here as well. So what this is saying now is because the skeleton won't be slayed at this point, if at any point the skeleton is slayed, so that value becomes true, these two if statements will not work. So what we need to do is copy that if statement there, place it below, and then we can remove that, the dialogue state, state take acts, because that doesn't really need to matter at this point. And we say this is now true. So we are saying that if the skeleton has been slayed, i.e. true, then we set the subtitle box on and we make our NPC say something like, thank you for your help. Help. Here is the key out of the village. So at that point, all we need to do there is basically say um, that we need to uh, get the key, village, you know, you've got to piece all of this together. Obviously, all of this will remain the same. Um, at this point, because uh, we have an uh, fault, so it does actually re-enable it down here, it doesn't say the component is true. Because we only want it to occur once, what we can do is we can add another if statement to this reset chat. So we can't keep talking to our NPC over and over and over and over until we develop the code to do that. What we're gonna do is add in an if statement here that says if skeleton uh, slayed is not equal. In fact, we'll just do equal because there's no point messing around. Equals false then do the following, which is this.getComponent box collider enabled true and save the script. So what we're doing is we're saying we can speak to our uh, NPC, no problem, that's fine. However, once we've slayed the skeleton, 
it will mean that we revert to this bit of text and this bit of text will now only happen once because this line of code will never run because we've actually already slayed our skeleton. So if we head to our, is it skeleton AI, I think? I think it's skeleton AI. Um, it may not be skeleton enemy. Is it skeleton enemy? It is, yeah. So in the skeleton enemy script, which is the script which allows us to stop our enemy attacking, so we know he's dead at this point. If skeleton, if his health is equal or less than zero, then we know he's dead. So what this means now is that we need to say, or rather we need to reference this NPC chat script, this bool here. However, we now need to make that static because it's going to be referenced from that other script. So make sure that's static. Head back to your skeleton enemy script. Declare the variable. So public game object NPC. I'll put chatter because why not? And then we say NPC chatter dot. Uh, it was, what was it called? I've forgotten already. Skeleton Slade. How can I forget that? NPC Chatter. In fact, nope. I don't know why I'm doing that because we don't actually need to reference to it. It's NPC Chat. Of course it is. I, I don't know why I even set that as a variable. I think so. Before I usually record tutorials, I test things and I was testing something else out and my brain's reverted to that. So we need to reference the script, don't we? So NPC chat dot skeleton slade equals true, semicolon, and save. So before I actually test out this entire sequence, what I want to do is I want to actually build the gate first. So that will probably mean us going to the asset store because why not? So let's go to the asset store. And let's type in gate because we're looking for a gate. Obviously, everything we do here is free. So let's go to pricing and free assets. And I have found this little set right here. Uh, obviously, I've independently chosen this. This is something I've chosen. I've not decided to uh, do it, you know, and no kind of interaction with the developer of this particular asset. And as you can see, I've downloaded it today. You see, this is the 16th of May, me recording this tutorial. I'm not sure when it'll be uploaded, but either way, this is the one. If you want to go same as me, this is one because I like that little gate that it's got right there. So let's find it in our actual uh, list. Is it this one? I think it is this one. So let's head back to our scene, village props, prefab. Uh, what have we got here? Is it in boards? Fence, ladder, logs, pallets, trunks. It's somewhere. I know it's somewhere. Uh, let me see. I'll tell you what we'll do. We can actually use the uh, fence, to be honest. Unless there's a nice scene. I'll tell you what. I'm going to save that. I'm actually going to go into this survival village scene as being created because it's always a good idea to do that kind of stuff. So the gate itself lovely it is this excellent so this particular asset we can search for there it is so we're going to take this this is going to be what we use in our scene so let's head back it, it was right there and i missed that huh. so let's head back to our main scene Let's go to where our skeleton enemy is and let's build that little section out of the game. Or rather this section, I should say. So in here and in here and prefab. So let's bring this in to here. I'm going to rotate 90 degrees and yeah. That looks fairly decent. I'm happy with how that looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size of that to two, in fact, not that one, the whole thing. So two by two by two. So it's a little bit bigger. Uh, I'm going to embed it in the ground just a little bit. And what I think I'll do is I am going to 
take the fence and maybe have the fence. Doesn't quite fit, but I'm going to stick with that fence right there. Uh, obviously, there's, you know, I've got a point out here that obviously we could just kind of jump over this section here, but in time, we're going to put barriers around and stop uh, out of bounds and all that kind of stuff. So let's put all this into place now, just to obviously have something useful in place. And this gets placed here. Probably bring it up a bit. Uh, let's have another one. I don't think there's any um, colliders on these, so we may need to add them. Let's do that now. So let's select all of those fences, add component, uh, physics, and box collider. Obviously, we'll need to increase the size of that collider to stop ourselves getting out of bounds. And size on the Z. Let's make that taller. There we go. So now I'm going to take those three again and just place them on the other side. There we go. So if you could now imagine that this is what we're saying as, yep, we can't get out of here. That's fine. So let's take a look at each of these. So I am going to put a collider around this section here but not this section here because this is the gate that we're going to open and when we get around to creating it in the next tutorial so for now let's add a cube to all of this because i absolutely love how cubes can they're just so simple but so useful in many many ways so i'm going to use this as my actual barrier out of here so let's have that covering to about there and uh, let's increase the size and turn off the mesh renderer now we could theoretically pass through this gate as it stands but we don't want to do that so let's add in fact it's got a mesh collider i don't think there's any point in having a mesh collider on this so i'm going to remove it and just add a standard box collider why simply because a box collider uses up less resources than a mesh collider because if you think about it, a mesh collider encompasses the entire object with a collider rather than just, you know, what a simple box. So it makes it easier. So now we won't be able to pass through here. However, what I'm going to do, just to kind of prove all of this worked, I'm going to place the trigger here ready for us to open the gate. So 3D object cube. And I'm going to call this exit village trigger i'm going to put it in place now it's not actually going to work this tutorial but we're just putting it here so we can see that when we have slayed the skeleton when we've been back to our npc that we would have the ability to open this gate so it was just a case of expanding this particular object the trigger all the way and i'm going to turn it off now, obviously, like I say, because it's a trigger, it's going to be invisible when we actually do the proper coding for this. But for now, I just want the visualization that all of this is working. So if we head back to our scripts and go to the NPC chat script, we're going to add one more variable, which is public game object village exit trig semicolon. And that will then be enabled in this section where he says thank you for your help so village exit trig dot set active true semicolon and save so now for all of this to work we just need to add in that variable to our npc so let's head back to the top let's go to our cat warrior to the script which has the conversation in it and then drag and drop exit village trigger onto there save the scene and i'm going to press play and i'm going to test out this entire sequence of completing this quest so let's pick up our axe right here and uh, let's go talk to our npc over here see so have have more favor Eliminate the threat. So let's go and get that skeleton. Here he is. 
and he's a goner. So while we're here, let's just take a quick look at all of this. We can't get through, can't get through, can't get through. Perfect. So you'll notice the exit trigger isn't there. And now we should be able to go to our NPC. He will know we've killed the skeleton and he will give us the key. Thank you for your help. Here is the key out of the village. And now we can't talk to him anymore because we've prevented that from occurring once again. So the final section of this will be there. So that trigger has now appeared. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to code that trigger, much like we have done with the door previously, into that house where our NPC is. Uh, we're going to start looking at creating the environment outside. So we're going to delve into some new uh, environmental design techniques. And we'll probably also add in another NPC out here to assist us in whatever we do next. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.